Welcome back, my friends, to Deadfire, and we are moving for the first time into the gullet in Nikitaka. You leave the bustle of the crowds behind, making your way along the winding path into the gullet. For a time, the path ascends the mountain, even so the cramped walls and run-down Huana buildings close in around you, obscuring your view. You come to a dark passage, cutting through the mountain just wide enough to accommodate a wagon. The path here descends steadily into the rock face. After a lengthy journey through the dimly lit tunnel, you come to the gates of the gullet. The stench hits you first, a foul mixture of rot, stale air and bodily odors. You notice a guardsman pushing a cart, heaped high with mouldering food. It must account for some of the smell. Ahead, the homes of the gullet emerge as a collection of lights amidst the darkness. You hear the rush of water below, and a frigid breeze wafts up from the unseen depths like an exhalation. It's truly the worst. Please! Here, I did nothing! You see a man being dragged along a rickety boardwalk toward a rusty cage that swings over the abyss. He strains against the guard's grip. The guard delivers a savage backhand. Enough! Or do you wish to consign her to the old city as well? The warrior cost casts a meaningful glance at a woman standing a short distance away. Let him go! Bia screams at the guards, but she doesn't dare approach. The man notices her. His face lights up with shame. Bia! I'm sorry! Ah! Uh your tongue flops like a dying fish. I tire of its stink. Lower him down! Can't we save this man? I want to save this man. Ah. The guards drag the Roparoo into a metal cage and lock him inside. He shouts and rattles the bars as it is lowered over the edge of the platform. Eventually his screams are lost to the depths. May Tangaloa devour your souls, you cold-blooded eels. What was this about? Hey, don't run. We want to talk to you. We want to know what this was all about. Let's see, she's going to the direction of these huts there, right? All aboard. Be born. careful. The gullet is no place for outsiders. The guard, the guard folds his arms, watching the activity on the walkways through slitted eyes. A coral piercing juts from his lower lip. He notices you with a sharp nod. You're just doing your job, right? But that is really a fierce job. Why was that man sent below? Totaro? He associated with foreign criminals. Oh. He spits. The gob of saliva is just one more splotch on the weathered and mottled boards. I see. It's conspiracy theories. I cannot be certain about Biha, so I let her go. But I will be watching her. These wicked sorts overrun the gullet and corrupt the Raparu. Our justice must be swift and firm. Where's Biha now? Hers is the first house you come to. Just there. He points southwest across the walkways. You'll probably find her there. And where does the lift go? To the old city, Ikira. A god's cursed ruin filled with walking corpses and abominations of the deep. <sighs> And the remains of lawbreakers and troublemakers. The gullet is no place to wander. Watch yourself for rowdies and pirates. Hmm. What can you tell me about Delva's Row? Somewhere beneath the gullet is a loose confederation of thugs, thieves, black marketeers, and other seedy individuals. Known as the Delva's Row, it's a place where most things can be found for the right price and word always travels quickly. Kira, it is a cancer in the gullet. A place of criminals and their foul dealings. He folds his arms and raises an eyebrow. And so why didn't your Rapa Nui or whatever do anything about it? And I cannot fathom for what anyone but a criminal would ask of it. He lowers his head and stares down his nose at you. Can I have access to the lift to the old Are city? you mad or merely lost? That place is a punishment for the lowest sort. He waves a hand toward the exit. Go and explore some place with pleasant views and fresh air. The harbor, or Periki's Overlook. Oh. Nikitaka has a rich history, and some of it lies buried. I must see it for myself. He shakes his head. It's your neck, Ikira. He whistles, and the guard standing by the lift looks over at him. We and will mark. leave the lift down there for half a day. That should be enough time to come back to your senses. After that, you are on your own. The guard will let you pass. Though I urge you to reconsider. So we could go down there now. Question is, should we, should, should we do this already? Hmm. 
I'll take care of Maybe not that wise. Because we're on a counter now. Let's take everything we have here. What is that? The wheel groans with the cage's weight. It's slick with protective oil. Do we only have that one chance to go down there? I hope not. Let's see. In there, talk to Biha. What do we have there? Is taking Bataro not enough for you? Oh, that's the kids. I'll see it done. Too sickly. You are an infant's lie swaddled under rags. Oh, the poor people. The poor ones. A woman tr thrashes a row of tunics and sarongs hanging from the rafters. Her pointed teeth are gritted in frustration. Her lips set in a snarl. The clothes are spotless, yet she swings a handful of reeds again and again, grunting with each blow. Several so children ha huddle together, whispering and looking on with red, tearful eyes. But Taro is gone. Dead. What more do you want? She punctuates each statement with a fierce whack of the reeds. The children flinch, looking between you and the woman. Um, take a deep breath and let's talk about this, whatever it is, calmly. She looks at you for the first time. A fraction of her anger burns off. Forgive me. I thought you were one of the foreigners who sent him away. Outsiders here always go to the tavern. My village was not like this. Why does Queen Onikaza not send the foreigners away? So the foreigners are the bad thing. <laughs> the bad people. Oh, uh, well, it's always that easy, right? It's not. How did you know the man was lowered into the old city? One of the children starts to say something, but Bia shoots him a sharp glare. She turns back to your arms crossed, gripping the reed bundle tight. Bataro is punished already, I say. Whatever offense he gave, do not hang it on our necks. She begins swatting at the laundry again, though with considerably less gusto. I know you're scared, but I'm not here to harm you. You say, but you have the face of Tangaloa, the eel of death. Even as she beats the sarong, she shudders. She turns away from you, striking the sarong hard. The traders harder. say they bring riches in their big ships. The fabric pops and snaps beneath her fury. Sweat is flying, spattering the clean sarong. But what reaches the gullet? Only crime and sickness, I say. She pauses to take another couple of swings at the sarong. Come on, that's just manic. Let's listen first. The Rawatayans promise marvels. Strong walls and plenty for all. She moves on to the next tunic, thrashing it with an even greater fury. Akira, still my back aches from building their fort, and still I live here. And Bataro said we would finally leave. She breaks off, her shoulders heaving as he catches her breath. Um, what happened? I heard a Rawatayan captain took up at the tavern. Suduzo, they call her. They say she is a traitor, so I thought maybe she will take passengers. Bataro went and found her in the tavern. Her eyes go hard and dark. Next I see him. The guards are dragging him to the cage. She bears her teeth at the memory. Maybe I can talk to her. Would that be good? She looks at you with the same critical eye she's been giving her laundry, wringing and tugging the reeds. Everyone knows the Rawatayans are made of brass. They listen only to their commanders. But still, maybe it goes different for you. She looks around, taking in the hanging clothes, the huddled children, and the ward and warped and splintering balls of the shack around them. Bataro took some coin. Everything he scraped together working on the docks. When he went to bargain with the captain. I would offer it to you, but it is probably in the old city with Bataro. Or in someone else's pocket. Huh. Tell me about that Rowatine captain. Seduzo. Bia is holding the reeds so tightly that she snaps one in two. They say she is a traitor, so I thought maybe she will take passengers. But she threw Bataro out. She looks down at the broken reed in her hands. Always Bataro was careful with his words, especially as a Raparu. But a Raparu in Nekataka gives offense just by breathing the air of his betters. Well then, uh, Raparu lives matter. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously a metaphor in this game. For all the suppressed people also in our world. Uh, there must be a way to... to to find something, right? 
How many of you need passage to Rawatan? We are six. Three children, two babes, and me. They're all yours? Such a strange question. A Raparu child is the child of all Raparu. All At right. least that is the way in the village where Bataro and me came from. But here, we are all strangers. No one looks in on the sick or cares for the children. That's so cold. Um... Oh, many of you need passage to Rawatai. Yeah, we, we had this. Mm. You know, I could look for I you. could never ask someone to go down to the old city, but since you offer... She trails off, working the reeds between her hands while hope and dread battle in her eyes. It is a big and dangerous place. But perhaps he hid himself. Perhaps... She steadies herself with a shake of her head. Please, help him if you can. Or bring me news if you cannot. Hmm. Do you know the way to Delvas Row? She blinks in horror. Never! That is the surest way to get the attention of the Overseer. She lowers her voice. I hear it is somewhere in the Narrows. It is possible Inouye knows. He has lived here longer than any. And where and who is Inouye? His hut is just along the walkway to the southwest. All right. Uh, about that stash of coin. <laughs> Where he creases her face, she sizes you up with a quick look. I tell you, I do not know where it is, and I am sure it would be little to someone like you. She licks her lips. After what happened, Bataro would sooner have thrown it into the waters than given it to the Mataru or the Rawatayans. Ah. If it is anywhere, it is surely with his body. All right. Um, can you take a different ship? She shakes her head. Many ships leave from Queen's birth, but the Valians take slaves. She lowers her voice and glances furtively around. They say the Principes smuggle goods in the caverns below, but I cannot trust such people. But the Rawatayans have mighty cannons and a big homeland they abandon for ours. Perhaps there is more room for us there. Probably. Probably. Are these poor infants, we should give her some money. Mm. Well, I hope her get away there. How to get to the Delvas Row and stuff, that would be interesting too. And that seems to be a tavern. From the looks of it. We must explore everything first, right? Why not go to the tavern then? Seems to be, well, close enough. I'll handle. In either dirt and mildew, these carvings look finely detailed and very old. There's something ahead. There's something here. And something here. Dead eye and here. 600 coppers! Woo! I think we discovered just the thing. Oh, that reminds me. Well, maybe let's restock on our quick items here. Do we have move a little bit of it over? Maybe the traps. Oh yeah, we need some hit points. Focus of the focused mind, the resilient body. Yeah, let's give us some resilient body stuff. Uh, we have some things here. Give you more healing opportunities. And our priest can have... I don't really know. Seven arcana, five arcana, two arcana. Scroll of withdraw. The winter wind. Prayer for the body. I've got the good old Adonan and the dead eye. Is that only for ranged weapons? No. Let's give him more dead eye and more stun bombs. And that should be it for now. Now let's enter. Oh, leave it to me first. Let's pick that stuff up. The rum. Now let's enter the hole. What a nice sign for the hole. Yeah, 
There's a hole in the sign. Eh? Yeah, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. It's perfect PR. The hole. Who wouldn't want to go to the hole? It's a wholesome experience. How did you hear that about the boss? With my own ears. Dario said there's treasures in that pit. Shh! Have you lost your wits? Oh, there's that captain. Yeah, let's let's do this first, right? Talk to him. Throughout time sits Ramrod straight on the table near her a half empty liquid bottle and a small porcelain cup. Both smell of anise. She looks like she's trying to blend in, but her unnatural stillness and a bright spotless attire make her stand out like a reef fish against the rocks her eyes find yours. Harami! Salami. I am here, Seduzo Nui. Oh, that's the name of someone. Do we expect today a local merchant? Seduzo keeps her eyes on you even as she speaks to the soldier. There's only a brief pause. We do not, Seduzo Nui. Captain shifts uncomfortably. Then state your business quickly. I want to avoid another surprise. Another surprise? She glances around quickly, as if she expects someone to jump out of another corner on the tavern. Did you cross paths with a man named Botaro? The one who threatened me. I shall not soon forget him. Well, she, he threatened you. She raises her cup for another sip, scowling into the liquor. These Juana learn too many pretty words from the Valians. You cannot trust what they say. What exactly happened? This fellow wanted passage on my ship. As if I were the village ferryman. She tosses back the rest of her drink a little too quickly. I told him there was none to be had. Certainly not at his price. She bends her empty cup. And then what? She fills her cup and sets the bottle down hard. You notice again that her hand is shaking. He told me he had coin. Lots of it. I did not believe him. How could a man who lives in a garbage heap have enough money for passage? She shakes her head. Then he shows me a swallonette. What's a swallonette? A marked coin. A token of allegiance. The Principe carry them. Ah, oh God, he showed the wrong coin. Go on. I knew then that I was dealing with a pirate. I had heard they were influential in the gullet, but I did not realize how much so. She scowled and shuddered. I called for the guards and they dragged him away. That is the last I saw of him. Well, that was a death sentence. Bia and the children still need passage out of the city. There's nothing I can do. The passenger quarters have been reserved by a dwarf named Orin. She picks a stray thread from her smooth, crisp jacket. Why do you bring this to me? Orin, okay. Um, Tell me about Orin. He and his people are gold-packed knights. Orin is... <laughs> particular. She looks at her crew and they nod in agreement. Well, perhaps that is good. He just finished a contract to guard the Valian Luminous Mill. I hear Anamancers are also particular. Who is not? He's upstairs. Just do not interrupt him if he's arranging things. She and her crew exchange another quick glance. What is your business with me? Um. What is. Yeah, what is your business in Nikitaka? Nearly done, I hope. I sold a consignment of iron and cultural coral, and will return to Rauatai with vorals, murkberries, and Andra stars. She shifts in her chair, tugging at her conspicuously clean and bright clothes. Hmm. Or that you take your business to the slums. You seem nervous. Does the Royal Dead Fire Company know you are trading here? She sets her glass down with a loud clap. <laughs> The Royal Deadfire Company would uh, frown on business in this district, but there's no harm if they don't know. She laughs nervously. I won't tell the Deadfire Company about your dealings here if you take Bia and the children. She tucks at her collar and looks around to see if anyone has overheard. Them. Very well. I could take three more in the hold, and no more. Orin and his crew have reserved the berths. The children are small. Surely you can take more. I will already have to abandon crates of cargo to make room for these three. Plus, the food and water they require. Very Send well. them to me. The sooner we leave, the better. She shifts in her chair, looking around the tavern as if she expects someone to jump at her. Ah, uh, I want to find enough room for behind all the and children. I told you there is none. The three I agreed to take will barely fit in the hold as it is. And tightens around her cup. 
What's your business Nearly here? done, I hope. I sold a consignment of iron okay, and okay, cultural yeah. coral. I thought Ruotides operated out of the glass citadel. And we'll return to Rautai with rolls, murkberries, and under stars. Most do. She avoids meeting your gaze. Her mouth is pressed into a hard frown. What frank. is your business with me? Nearly Let's done, more. I hope. Or that you sold a consignment to take your business to the slums and unless you're trading illegally. She sets her glass down with a loud chatter. <laughs> the Royal Deadfire Company would uh, frown on business in this district. But there's no harm if they don't know. She laughs nervously. What is your business with me? Do you know the way to Adela's Row? I would have nothing to do with such a place. Her posture stiffens even as her eyes flit around the room. But I hear the uh, proprietor might know more. Thank you and farewell. So we still have to talk Oron out of out of uh, taking part in this, and there's more here to do. And the hole is pretty big, so I'll say thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll explore the hole now, and then we'll help Biha further. And we still must not forget that we have to go down the elevator or the elevator will no longer be there for us have a great time until next time and happy gaming this is Immanuel Khan signing out see you soon my friends and happy gaming